All right, ladies and gentlemen. So when we talk about LSU's 2019 season, it was definitely a magical season. Um, you're talking about an LSU team coming into this year with a lot of question marks. Um, well, first of all, what was their offense going to look like? Was it going to look like the same pro style under center? Um, you know, you got some spread concepts in there, but overall wise, slow paced football. Um, really, really just wasting the talent you have on the offensive side of the ball. Another really good defense wasted, and you guys end up eight and four, nine and three, um, nine and three. Best case scenario, you guys have ten wins. You fall to Bama, and this team just continues to underachieve. This program really continues to continues to overachieve. I'm sorry, underachieve, um, and also failing to compete for a championship. Right, LSU has always had that national championship talent caliber of talent but they've really never they've always underachieved um but this year was special because you came in here ed ordron made the special adjustments you brought in a guy like joe brady from the saints and you made him brought over and you brought him over here to really modernize the offense make the offense fast pace use the use the wide receivers to the best of its abilities. Obviously, the talent is there, but making their jobs easier. Joe Burrow, he's been in this type of offense before at Ohio State, pretty much his entire career since, since high school. And so now you're, you're bringing an offense that is really, really, that um, it fits well with Joe Burrow, right? He's comfortable. Um, he even said himself that he was comfortable in this offense. Um, but still, you know, the transition of bringing in a new offense, especially that this team is not used to, and really mastering it, um, it's unheard of, and LSU did it. Um, but again, you bring a guy like Joe Brady to pair him up with Steve Insminger, and it clicked. And you look at the schedule that LSU had to go through. It was a gauntlet. You go, you go in there your first game, even though we saw your spring game, and everyone was like, hey, this offense looked good, but let's see how it looks against Texas, against Alabama, against Auburn. Let's see how it looks. You guys go in there, first game, and beat Texas in a in one of the best games of the year. But you go in there in, in, in Texas, who was projected to be a top 10 school, you win that game. And then these guys just, these guys, it was just smooth sailing for here. You beat Auburn, you beat Florida, you beat Alabama. You finally got that off your chest. You beat Alabama. Alabama's won eight times in a row. And you finally got that monkey off your shoulder in Tuscaloosa and Joe Burrow, he's done something. Probably he's done something that I think no other quarterback has done in Tuscaloosa. I think the closest was really Chad Kelly and um, Johnny Menzel. But Joe Burrow probably did even better because he probably he was the most efficient probably out of all of them. And the offense chewed up that Saban defense. We haven't seen this in Tuscaloosa since Chad Kelly and Ole Miss did it in 2015. But you finally got that monkey off your back. You made Louisiana proud. We saw Joe Burrow running through the airport, slapping every LSU fan up. The entire state is partying. Fireworks all across the state of Louisiana. It Orgeron crying. Emotions are running wild. LSU veterans that are in the NFL, and there are hundreds of them. Some of the best players in, in, the, in football are celebrating like they were there. Because they couldn't get it done for eight years. Tyron Matthew, uh, 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 you look at guys like Tyron Matthew, uh, Morris Claiborne, Leonard Fournette, Darius Geis, Jamal Adams, Tredavious White. I mean, I can go on. These guys couldn't get it done. And for eight years. Oh my God, o my, Odell Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry. I mean, I, the list goes on, people. They couldn't get it done. So the fact that LSU finally got that monkey off their shoulder and beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa, you knew that this team was ready. You knew that really that this was their national championship. But you knew that LSU was ready for anything. And they went on and they defeated Georgia. They crushed Georgia in the SEC championship game. Then you blew out Oklahoma. And then all of a sudden, you, you crush Clemson. And it's now in Clemson. It was a close game. Clemson was up by 10 points at one point. You thought, oh, wow, well, this is the end of LSU's wonderful run. But then LSU comes back. And then they crush Clemson, dominate them in the second half. And you win it in Louise, in New Orleans, Louisiana. You win the national championship in New Orleans, Louisiana. 
But not just that. Even going prior to the playoff games that I just mentioned, Joe Burrow wins the Heisman. Jamar Chase wins the Belitnikoff Award. Grant Delpit wins the Jim Thorpe Award. The LSU Offensive Line, they win the Jim, uh, the Joe Moorhead Award. I'm sorry, the, 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 off- the Joe Moore Award for the best offensive line unit in the country. Ed Orgeron wins a, pl- he wins a plethora of, 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 of awards. LSU takes home almost every award you can potentially imagine. They did everything. This was literally, we talk about Clemson having the perfect season. This was the perfect season for LSU. Or the closest to it, right? Their defense was pretty good, but it wasn't like Clemson, it wasn't like LSU had the best defense in the country. Because otherwise that would have been the perfect, the perfect of all perfect seasons. But this was probably the closest to perfection we have probably ever seen, probably since 2013 Florida State. Probably since 2013 Florida State or 2010. Um, Auburn, or go, or you got you might have to go all the way back to uh, 01. You might have to go back to the USC days, or the Miami days, or the Nebraska days. This team that LSU built was special, and you can make an argument it was the greatest season probably ever because of because offensively it was the most unstoppable machine we have ever seen. We've never seen an offense do this to this many top 10 opponents, this many caliber of really, really good defenses. Joe Burrow averaging almost th- almost 400 yards a game against these top defenses, it's unheard of. It's unheard of what these players were able to do. My goodness. And then you look at the unstoppable Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. The best wide receiving duo as far as statistically, we have probably ever seen. Never have I seen a wide receiver do in college football dominate the way that these two were able to have. These two were unguardable. It was just a magical year for this LSU offense, something that I don't, I just don't believe will ever be replicated. And it's crazy because in 2018, we talked about Alabama's offense being the greatest offense we have ever seen. With not just two guys, they had four receivers that could be first round picks. They had three running backs. Two of them were drafted. Two of them were drafted in the first three rounds. One of them being a first round pick, who was their third string running back. Jonah Williams being a first round pick. Tua Tagovailoa, who's going to be a first round pick. It's and to see that this offense toppled that is insane. But man, what a year for Ed Orgeron. What a year for the state of Louisiana to have this type of team to win the games that they did and how dominantly they did it in and to cap it off with a national championship in New Orleans is absolutely magical. You talk about the 2020 season, and of course, just like how good things, good things can happen, some things can be snatched away like that. You talk about losing both your co-offensive coordinator and Joe Brady, the man who probably sparked this evolution of your offense, you take he's he's going to the NFL. You look at you look at your defensive coordinator and David Aranda, he's gone. He's off to Baylor. You look at you look at, you look at the players, nine underclassmen leaving to the NFL. Calavian Chassian, um, Chasson, uh, man, um, I mean, just nine underclassmen going to the NFL like that. It just. It's just like that, man. And then you look at the senior leadership of your team. Michael Divinity Jr., who just came back, he's gone. You look at Richard Lawrence. Look at Brandon Fajoko. These guys are gone. And then you lose four out of the five offensive linemen. It's not easy to, to get to fill, in the, 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 to fill in your offensive line, especially four of them. I remember last year, these, these guys were getting dominated by Quinn and Williams. So even though yes, this team, this offensive line came back, this it wasn't like it wasn't like they were always this good. So the fact that you're losing that much leadership on your offensive line, that 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 can be a big blow. But you look at LSU and what they're able to do. This team, one thing that LSU was able to do for decades, and even when this team were winning eight, nine games a year and always underachieving, the team was always able to reload and and put players in the NFL. They always found a way to do it. They always found a way. And one thing the state of Louisiana has, they have the players. Louisiana has the players. You look at you look at you look at the 2020 recruiting class, another top five recruiting class. You're bringing in the majority of them for the state of Louisiana. 
You look at getting a coach like Bo Pelini, a guy that was your championship defensive coordinator in 2007, one of the best defensive minds in all of college football. He's going to be, he's going back to LSU. So that's huge. But there are lingering questions about your offense. Number one, can, can, can what, your offensive line, how is it going to look? Is it going to be better or is it going to be worse? You look at your quarterback situation. You're losing an all-time great in Joe Burrow. Will Miles Brennan be able to fill in the void for Joe Burrow? You look at the defensive side of the ball. You got talent there. You got players like Jay Ward at the secondary. Le secondary, they should be fine. Jerry, you, know, you look at Monroe. You look at Todd Harris. I just talked about Jay Ward. Uh, you look at Maurice Hampton Jr., who played a lot. Uh, Derek Stingley Jr., the all-time freak of an athlete as a as a best cornerback probably in all of football as a freshman. He's going to be back. So the secondary wide should be back, Kerry Vincent. But then defensively, there are some questions, right? Um, there are some questions as far as the linebacking position. Defensively, defensive line, they should be fine with uh, Siaki Aikia. Uh, look at guys like Damone Clark at the linebacking position, Tyler Shelvin, Nick Farrell, and also Glenn Logan. So... These guys should be fine. The question about LSU is that can they get to that national championship caliber level? Can they get back there and win the SEC West? Get through Bama, first of all. Can they get through a, a Bama team that's going to bring back a lot of talent next year? A lot of the guys, LSU won that game by five points. Let's not forget that. A lot of those players that play for Alabama were freshmen. Freshmen and early sophomores that have never played. You're talking about an Alabama team that's going to be much more experienced than they were even last year. You don't, and again, the best Nick Saban teams are the are the are the teams that have the most experience on them. So we're gonna have to find out if LSU can replicate what they did last year and beat and win and snatch the SC West away from Alabama again. We will see Ed Orgeron. We we will see just how good of a coach he is when everything is falling apart. Everybody is leaving. Your coaches are leaving. Can you be able to rebuild and keep that level that LSU had this year in twenty that in twenty nineteen? Can they do it and 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 bring in that level of focus on the twenty twenty? That is something that we're gonna have to find out. But anyway, guys, that's all I got from LSU season recap. Congratulations to the LSU football Tigers of winning the national championship. Let's see if LSU can do it again in twenty twenty. But that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys liked the video, hit the like button, share the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Really helps out the channel a lot. And that's all I got for you guys today. This is Jess716. I'll catch you guys later on my next season recap. Peace.